The double tripler, 50 dogs in, making history. Oh my goodness. Do you hear that? Those are bluebirds singing on a bluebird day live from Vail, Colorado at the 2020 Burton U.S. Open Snowboarding Championships. It is finals Friday and this entire town is a buzz at the greatest snowboarding event in history. Who will add their name to the list of champions that have become legends within the community of snowboarding? You're looking at the top end of a truly progressive slope style course. This rail section just offering a plethora of opportunity. Every single one of our features in this slope style course are being judged equally. And right off the bat, we will get into it with the young Japanese rider from Kumamoto City, Miyabi Onsuka, sponsored at six years old. The talent was seen. Burton picked her up at seven, and she has been on a tear ever since. Sal Masekela here with Tina Dixon, X Games gold medalist, as well as Olympian and former Burton U.S. Open champion, the tiny dancer, Louis Vito. Welcome. Happy Finals Friday, everybody. Yeah, the energy is here. You, you feel it when you just walk outside on that course. Uh, it's the U.S. Open. We have arrived. Indeed. <laughs> you know, my, the best thing is, is we had some weather earlier in the week. And now it's the finals, and we have perfect weather. Yeah, 41 degrees at present. It's probably going to get up to somewhere around 50. Um, that we saw in practice, I mean, this course is riding fast. The women absolutely chucking. There you see light winds of only 7 miles an hour. At, at the beginning of the week, uh, we were struggling. Um, and the riders were struggling a bit with, with practice uh, because of the winds. Talk about this course, guys. What makes this so unique uh, here at the Open? Well, they've added two transition features, which are completely different. You know, you do have that big jump at the bottom, but those transition features uh, will differentiate the riders. You know, it's great. You start off with the traditional rail section, and there's so many options without making it too complicated, but it's another way for riders to express themselves in their run. So we have that traditional down rail with the slight kink. The kink tube, a little gap over, and then you have a gap to the down tube, and then, of course, the long, flat down tube. And let's not forget the, wall the ride. Red Bull wall ride right there. And then we come into those new tra transitional features. You know, normally we see one and there might be a jump option, but this one, you have to hit it. And we have back to back. So if you hit it front side, you have to hit it back side on the next one. And that is something new that these riders haven't really had to face. And it's been fun to see in semifinals. And then of course, you have the last rail section to kind of break up the jumps, the cannon box, and the money booter to end, which everybody loves to put on a show. Yeah, and what's been nice to see is the riders earlier this week, you know, they were kind of struggling how to figure this out. And then after practice and into now, what? wait and see. We started with 16 women into a six-woman final. Each section is going to be judged in real time with equal score with the SLS scoring system, uh, up to 10 points per feature. And then, of course, that overall impression score, which makes such a difference. Look at this field. It's just stacked with Olympians, X Games gold medalists, uh, former winners here, I mean, Jamie Anderson. And this, in, in talking last night to Anagasa, she said, what's great about this course and about this field of women is that it is literally any one of us can win. It is going, it, any, there's no favorite. And there's absolute truth in that. It is a heavy, heavy field. As we mentioned, first off is the young Miyabi Onsuka coming off of a big X Games gold medal win uh, in Big Air with that double cork 1080 that shocked the world. Uh, and this is definitely the most progressive field uh, of, of time in, within women's snowboarding. You know, you talk to any of the ladies and they'll say Miyabi's been riding so strong this year. There's a 50-50 board slide, 270 out. Of course, coming, as coming in regular, there's that Backside alley 720. So that's new. She added that from semifinals earlier, and then she combines that with a frontside 720. A little bit of a hand drag, but still stepping it up already. Ooh. 
This whole run has been stepped up from what we saw in semifinals. Coming into the last jump switch. There's the cap 900. Yeah. Way that to run, start off a final. That run was burly. The backside 180, switch 50-50 to backside three, switch backside three, and then come in and do that on the last. Come on! That is how you start a contest, and she has just sent a message to the rest of the competitors. It is best of three runs here at the Burton US Open Snowboarding Championships, and Miyabi said, I'm going to show you all of it on this first run. And this here, backside 720 with that mute grab. That was the first time that I've seen her do that in a competition, and check this out. The 180 on switch, backside 360. Uh, but this switch frontside 900, we know she can hit jumps. She showed us right there with that solid landing, but her rails, her rail game has really stepped up. Remember each one of these judged out of 10 points. Look at that trick score. Overall impression is gonna be strong. And just like that, we are up there in the big numbers, 76.6. Miyabi Onitsuka sets the bar. And in talking to the women in this field, they said if one of us lands a run, it's on. Like we don't know how to hold back after that. We're gonna start feeding off of each other. Next up is a legend, somehow only 29 years old, you know, ja Jamie Anderson, we, we've known her since she was about 14, 15. Uh, she's been on a tear this year, won this event in 2018, and has really been the dominant name. Didn't qualify at first, but has been the dominant name all season. Well, she's had a really good season coming into this. Uh, she won X Games. She won uh, the Dew Tour. And what's really set her apart this year, I've noticed, is that style, that effortless, smooth riding that she has just continued to maintain and improve. What has Jamie Anderson not won is really the question. She's done it all in slope style snowboarding and even big air more recently, but she's so consistent and consistency is key to have the longevity that she's had, but also be as dominant as she is. Yeah, a seven time champion here at the US Open. Uh, and that's just one of at the US Open. Yeah, you, you, you think she likes it here? Uh, again, this is, you know, we talk about the fact that, you know, Olympic gold, uh, X Games gold, but really within snowboarding, this is the one that counts the most. This is it, the one. If you win gold, you, you first place within at the, at the Burton US Open, that, that just takes your name in snowboarding forever. And this year is incredibly special also um, because we're celebrating Jake Burton. Indeed, Jake Burton, the, the father of this culture. Uh, this is really a life celebration. Many of the riders saying, you know, winning the US Open is a big deal, but to win this year in this special celebration uh, of Jake Burton, who we lost in November 20th of 2019, would make it even more special. There's that backside 540 on the first transitional feature. Coming in switch right here. Switch backside five, getting a little off access. I like, I like the access on that one. Slow and drifty. Ooh, board slide 450 out on the cannon box. Coming in, switching to the last jump. Cab double cork 900, taking oh it deep. Oh boy. What? <laughs> we got a contest. It's only the first run. Consistency, we said it at the beginning. So that trick, that bottom, that cab double cork 900, in 2019, she was trying to do that in semifinals and didn't qualify because she was falling on both of them. But here, she just stomped it. Starts off with the backside lip slide. Jamie's really been able to evolve and adapt with snowboarding since she's been on the scene since she was 13, 14 years old. And that's a testament to how strong of a rider she is. Look at this board slide, 450 out, just spots the landing. And then this right here, I can't emphasize enough how deep she went in that compression that she has and she just stomps it. Jamie has done a really good job of learning new tricks, maintaining that style, and then adding doubles like that one, that cab double cork 900. Again, she kept falling on it last year in the semifinals. There, stomped it. Look at the size of that trick score, 48.5. Overall impression is going to be strong. We're looking at a new leader for sure. 84.5 <laughs> for Jamie Anderson, namaste. This is a woman who spends a lot of time in both fitness and yoga and in healthy mindset when off the snow. And it all 
it just gets thrown into the mix when she gets on her snowboard. So great to see her mom at the bottom cheering her on. You know, you know how many contests that she's been to supporting through the years. I'm so you know, I have to give so much respect for the parents that you know have helped their children achieve this success. Well, both of you as former athletes know that what that means to have that kind of support. Because it's not the normal choice to tell your parents, like, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be I'm gonna be a pro snowboarder. Like, hey, hey what? I thought, me? I thought you were going to study psychology. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's kind of, you know, you got a lot of things. You got to learn mental game, strength. There's it's a lot the of same. You, it, you learn a lot being a professional snowboarder all around. You know, we've, we've watched snowboarding for, for decades. And you, Tina, you, you played a, a, a role in this women's progress. What's it like for you to see what where this level has gone to with this particular core uh, of women riders? It just makes me so happy. Uh, just to where they have gone from the rails to the jumps. And what really impresses me is they just continue to push each other and they support each other. And that just you know makes that progression yeah, continue. It, it is super competition, but also all for one as they feel like they're in this together. Any Ruka Yarvi, uh, incredible veteran, 29 years of age, strong performances at the last two Olympics, a very quiet person off snow, but her riding speaks very, very loudly. That front blunt going for the 270 out, it looked like, just not, unable to kind of get that pop out. Coming into the first transition feature, this is gonna be more of a practice run for any, just kind of feeling out the course, get an extra one. It's a best of three runs. Semifinals was two, this is three, so you're really gonna allow the riders to push themselves and each other. And if you have that strong mental game, you know that you just put this run out of your head, you've got two more chances. There's a nice cab, 720 to end the run. Unfortunately gonna be a throwaway for any, but she's got two more. There was a time when someone could have a bobble on one of the features uh, in a slope style run and still be considered in contention. But now as soon as you see someone put their hand down or wash out a little bit, you're like, yeah, that, that's not gonna, that, that's where the level is at. Well, especially with what we've seen uh, from just those first two riders, really pay attention to the scoring and even those tenths of a point because at the end of the day, that could be the difference maker. You know, the other thing is too is, any lady on this start list could win. So it's, there's no one like, you know, I'll be happy with fourth, that's really good finish. It's like, no, I came here to win and I have the ability to win. So a little bobble, nope, I have to make it perfect because I want to win and I know everyone else is gunning for that top spot. One of the great things about the Burton US Open Snowboarding Championships uh, as we wait for any score is that this is the end of the season. This is really the culmination of a long, long season of these athletes traveling around the world, living out of backpacks and suitcases and couch surfing, etc. And this is this is the culmination of so much hard work. And this is an event that everyone looks forward to. So there's some events you might have to go to for your national team or for points, but the US Open is one you want to go to. Haley Langland, she can get it done on a skateboard, surfboard, or snowboard. And she's really one of those super well-rounded uh, riders who spent a lot of time in the half pipe. And we'll talk to her about her approach uh, to these quarter pipe features. I don't think the quarter pipes are really that challenging for the girls because, I mean, I've rode half pipe all my life growing up, and so I'm pretty comfortable on them. But even for the girls that have never stepped foot in a half pipe or tackling it and kind of making it seem like they've done it for a while, I don't feel any difference from trying to land straight down instead of like landing back into a pipe. And I think that's just a testament to how good at snowboarding these girls are. I mean, they're crushing it and we're on the rise. Confidence. Haley Langland, she might only be 19, but like that veteran confidence that says, hey, I've been riding this type of terrain since I was little. Like, let's let's go. And that confidence really shows through when you watch her on the rails and that just compact, perfect style. Starting out with a backside lip slide there. You saw in that last run, you know, just how technical Annie came off of that rail just a little bit wrong, and there went her run. And a giant front side 540 holds on to that. So now she's heading into this feature switch with a switch backside 180. Uh, I personally love that trick. It's a lot harder than it looks. 
Coming in, switch into that, this last jump. Cab 720. Deep. And that was the best Cab 720 I've seen her do all week. I would say that um, Haley has a lot more room. Absolutely. In these next two runs. She has such good style, so smooth. Even if she lets go of a grab, her arms stay pretty calm. I love watching her snowboard. Yeah, went right when she first came on the scene, I remember the first time I saw her, I was like, wait, who's this kid? Because that, like you said, Louis, that, that confidence and air awareness makes her look like she's just casual in the air. Like this switch backside 180. I love the nose grab on that. Only scoring a five, which, you know, when you look at the scoring, she may want to step that up, if anything. And you'll see on her next run on that cab 720, she can normally do a double grab. She starts off, I believe, with mute, ends with the tail, and she reached for it, it wasn't there, but again, her style is so smooth, it just floats it. It's okay, it still looks good. It is not easy uh, to not panic in the air when you're going as huge as these athletes are. And that we will talk about that air awareness. That, that's something that you have to work at. We talk about the Burton US Open being a place for first. So many times, never been, been done before tricks in competition. Anna Gosser is just one of those people who she's always looking. And yesterday in practice, she had a vision in her head, she saw something in the, in, the, in the quarter pipe section. She said, I think I can do a double crippler on course. And so in practice, she threw this down. Look at this. Perfect. Spots the landing, stomps it. And I love it because you can watch her head and you can see that she's just looking at the landing the whole time, is ready to open up. And she literally has her boy board pointed down to match the landing. And she took that thing and posted it straight to Instagram. Exactly. And said, see y'all tomorrow. You should have seen the amount of comments. Oh, it was just fire, fire, hot, hot. Wow, wow. You know, the thing with Anna is she doesn't look at what is. She looks at what can be. The first female to compete a triple, complete a triple, triple cork, excuse me. And straight off the bat, Boom. double crippler. I think that was even better than the one we saw on Instagram. There's the front side 540 coming in switch to the rails. Going for the high rail. Catboard slide 270 out. So smooth. Now the last jump. And there's the double cork 900. Flawless landing. It was an effortless on that cap double nine. Yo. Finals Friday. The first of three runs. And she just put that down. Wow. Just plain wow. Love that lip slide transfer to start things off. And here's the double crippler. Look at the score, a 9.2. And where she landed so far down on the landing, kept her speed. Front side, 540, tiny bit short on that. And then the cab, double cork 900 at the bottom, an 8.8 .8 for the score. I don't know that we'll see her try the triple on that bottom jump today, but she she said that she's been really working to mitigate expectations because for a little while, it felt like the judges expected her to do it and it was getting in her head like, well, maybe I'm supposed to do that mm -hmm. trick. Uh, but she said, I'm, I'm not, it. look at that, 8.8 .8 for the switch front double. Got room. So she has room to improve on that second rel mm. and the second transition feature. Incredible athlete. If you don't follow Anagasa on, uh, oh, we get to talk to her right now? Oh, cool. Hey, Anna. Can you hear? Ah, yes, I can hear you. <laughs> <laughs> you are with uh, Sal, Tina, and Louie. Congratulations. Uh, we know we saw you land uh, that double crippler in practice, but what did it mean to be able to land it uh, in your first run? Um, it means so much. Like sometimes it's more about doing new tricks for me than about the results. And 
I'm just already so happy that I could put down this new trick in my first round. Like, so, so happy. <laughs> when did you start to vision doing that trick? Um, well, I did some single grip last in practice, and I was, I was thinking I went pretty big, and I'm like, I think I could try the double. And then yesterday in practice, I, it was the day. It was a little softer and sunshine, and I just tried, and it worked out. Well, we look forward to what else you have for us in your next two runs. Uh, good luck and keep having fun. Thank you so much. This final is insane. So excited to watch everyone ride. We are too. <laughs> Gotta love that. You know, that we talked about it before that these women are competing against each other, but it is that all mm -hmm. for one, one for all for this very special mo movement within snowboarding history. Well, let's get back up to the top. Our number one qualifier and defending champion, Zoe Sadowski Sanat, whose life has changed so much in the last year since she won this event. It's been great to see Zoe. She might not have had the results she's won, wanted so far this year, but she qualified first and is the defending champ. So she, you know she wants to prove something. And she also has put down some new tricks in this course since semifinals. So dropping and switch there with the switchboard slide. 50-50, 360 out coming into the first transition. Backside back. 540, coming in switch now. There's the switch backside 540. And watch what she does here. 50-50 to Wildcat. Getting a little backflip off of that and has a lot of speech. Has to do some speed checks here. Oh, going oh. for the 1080. <laughs> the front side double cork. 1080. So the first uh, 1080 that we've seen so far in this competition from the women had a little, some problems with that landing, but if she puts that down. Let's also talk about the way she muscled out that landing and didn't end up getting caught heel side. Spec coming in blind like that. That was great, you know. I, I heard that she put down a 10 on that last jump, so I was wondering if we were gonna see it first run, but man. Just the glimpse of what's gonna be coming. Run two. And she set that up. Her setup trick was that 50-50 to underflip. Right there. Almost a little slightly under rotated, maybe on the flip aspect, not the spin. I just I can't emphasize enough, like at this level, getting out of a bad situation like she did. That could have that could have been a bad crash. Air awareness. So if, if you if you were wondering whether or not Miss Zadowski Sadat was here to defend her championship, clearly she's here for it. Two more runs to go. Jamie Anderson continuing her run and saying, y'all are gonna have to come and get me. But every single one of these competitors has shown that they could be the 2020 Burton US Open snowboarding champion. So what's interesting, Haley Langland had such a smooth run, but her score is in the 60s right now. She's sitting in that fourth place spot. So that just goes to show that uh, really, they're, they're very picky, those judges, because she had a really good run. Yeah, I mean, all week long, we've seen the judges really, it's easy for us to get up caught emotionally because we're all snowboard fans. They're snowboard fans too, but again, leaving that room for scale for what's possible at this level. Uh, we talked a lot about the fact that this this year's uh, Burton U.S. Open Snowboarding Championships is really a celebration uh, of, of Jake Burton, the man who gave us the culture that infected all of us. It said, we want to not just do this thing, but live this thing. And today, this morning, in celebrating his life, Tina, uh, you got to go up for a, a very special ride for Jake Day at, at 8 a.m. this morning. Oh, I did. It was... Uh I was super honored to be part of that ride for Jake this morning. We took the gondola up at 8 a.m. and there were so many people going up and uh, they had riders with flags riding down the mountain and you were following them down this run that they just named Jake Stash. Um, it was heavy, it was powerful, it was beautiful. Yeah. And I mean, it just showed the like-mindedness of snowboarders and being up there and celebrating um, celebrating snowboarding and Jake Burton yeah. all at once. You shot some footage on your phone uh, that we have that we'll take a look at. How's everybody doing this morning? Yeah. 100% celebration. Uh, Jake Burton is the 
Gives you chills, absolutely gives you chills. I mean, Jake Burton at this event, especially every time that you saw him, it was like seeing a little kid. He would be at the bottom of each course, slope style and half pipe, high fiving. We started this thing. And March 13th is going to be uh, a ride for Jake Day. You can go to a rideforjake.com, see which mountains that are participating. The mountains that are participating, if you sign up, Snowboarders are going to get to go and ride for free and celebrate Jake Burton. He has left us um, physically, but his spirit will continue to be the torch that burns for the future of this culture. And we are so grateful for everything uh, that Jake Burton gave us. Right, right on, Jake. Let's head up uh, for run two in that spirit. All of uh, these riders have said that they are riding for Jake, um, this event being even more special uh, to win in this year. And we head back to, up to the top with Miyabi Onsuka, who did not hold back in run one. We started with a bang. She yeah. started this off the right way. Again, coming off of that big air gold medal win in Aspen at X Games. During practice, Louis, you commented that this was your favorite kit, Miyabi's outfit. Love it. You were giving points for that. Of course, I love how clean it is. There's the board slide, 270 out. Speaking of clean. Sending that back seven on the first transition feature. Coming into the second one, front side 720. So two more features to go. And she's going to approach this last jump coming in switch. She did a cab 900 on the first run. And she's going for the cab 1080. I had a feeling, I was like, she's, I feel like after she saw Zoe go for the 10, it was her time. Remember this broadcast has an alternative broadcast just in Japanese. We know the Japanese fans uh, are tuning in. That last, that last 1080 was no joke, but look how clean she was up in the top of this section, Louis. She just gets it around right here, but this is my favorite hit in her whole run. Backside 720 because of the pop that she had and just stops. That was a large back seven on the first transition feature. And of course, the front side 180, switch backside three out, getting a little stale fish. And then approaching this last jump, switch, going for that switch, front side 1080. That is hard. She drifted off the corner a little bit on that takeoff. You think if she pops off center, she's gonna stick that thing. I think just a little cleaner and plus, you got that rep out of the way. Now, you know what to do, you know what to fix, and it's the second time doing it. The second time I feel like is always easier than the first one where you might be a little nervous. And that is the beauty of having uh, this three-run format. Miyabi finished third here last year. No doubt she would like to move up uh, and get that win. Look at this blooper day here at Vail. Are you kidding me? Finals Friday. A lot of these riders uh, spend time in the backcountry. Um, not just at competitions. Jamie Anderson is one of those people, and she actually feels that riding in the backcountry gives her an advantage in the rest of her snowboarding. I think riding backcountry just helps your overall snowboarding. Even like riding the pipe helps your park riding. I think just being able to snowboard and be good at whatever's in front of you just makes you a stronger all over shredder. Terry, Terry Hawkinson was in here with us yesterday, and he said, you know, snowboarding is about reading terrain. And if you can read terrain in the backcountry and, and be able to make those reactions, that it transfers on the slope style and into the super pipe. And Jamie just backs that up. Yeah, I agree with everything that she said there. And, um, you know, I watched some clips of her movie the other night un from Unconditional. She can ride backcountry and she throws 720s and big tricks off of cliffs and giant features in that backcountry. And it's really impressive. So it was nice to see her get out of that slope style, you know, competitive scene and ride terrain like that. Flawless up top. 
just doing what Jamie does so smooth and way bigger on that second transition feature. This is so smooth. There's that board slide, 450 out. What do we have on the last jump? Coming in switch. And she, she goes for the cab 1080. Uh, everyone is hungry. There's just no place to hide on course. You know, there's there's no there's no feature that anyone can be like, oh, I'm, I'm just, I've, I've done so well in the rest here, I'm, I'm just gonna chill here. Starts out here with that tail slide, 270 out, gets a 8.0 on that. And the judges are really rewarding high on those rails if you can get those like spin on, spin off. What happened here, Louie? Just a little under rotated right there. You can see her nose kind of just catches. So almost maybe hold on a little bit or just give it a little bit more off the takeoff to be able to get that last, honestly, 10 degrees more. Still an impressive trick score. I mean, when, with all those big numbers up in the top part, easily can easily see Jamie Anderson putting down that run that gets her uh, an eighth, an eighth Burton U.S. Open Snowbridge. That's insane. Even if you get just one, that is huge. But she has seven and now going for her eight. Yeah, the most dominant uh, woman in slope style, period. I mean, Jamie Anderson is just such a talented snowboarder. I remember going to events, she was doing slope style, half pipe and border cross. Right. Like, she can do it all. She filmed a movie in the backcountry. I mean... Jamie Anderson blows my mind, and I've known her since we were little, but every season it's just, what did she do different this year? Because it's going to be amazing. And when you talk about it, it makes, makes you think almost like the old days of Tara uh, who, who was the same way. Well, we've got Jamie gracing us. Namaste, Jamie Anderson. Namaste. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Hi. You're one of the things that I, when I'm watching your riding, there is a comfort and smoothness. Even though this course is so intimidating, you look like you're just having fun out there at your home park <laughs> thank you yeah um i don't always feel that way i definitely had the shakes and the nerves that last run was like the first full pull run i've done all week so <laughs> i was really happy what is it like with, with this field in the manner in which you're all pulling each other i mean every single run it's just bangers bangers and you're like oh it's my turn <laughs> it's inspiring as ever. Like, I think this is my 13th U.S. Open, and holy smokes, the level of progression is unbelievable. I'm so happy to still be here with all the youngsters, and they're just kind of like, I don't know, setting my heart on fire. <laughs> like, look at these little munchkins. I'm like, holy smokes. So <laughs> I'm happy to be out here, almost 30, still charging. <laughs> Um, but feeling better actually than ever, which is really nice because I used to think 30 was old and now I'm like, I'm just getting into my prime. <laughs> You're just getting started <laughs> and we're so lucky that we've gotten to watch you since you were 13, 14 years of age. Still loving it with the same energy. Good luck to you, <laughs> Thank you. Uh, in your next run. Thanks for stopping Thanks, by. Thanks, Sal. Bye, guys. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome. What did she say? 13 U.S. Opens that yeah. she's competed in and uh -huh. she's won seven of them? Seven. <laughs> Uh-huh. That's incredible. There's, Those are good uh, percentages. Anagasa, who's fired up after that first run, but we get back uh, to the quiet finish. Any Ruka Yarby. What does she need to do in this run, Louis? You know, just clean up that first rail, which is where she had problems in the first run, and she does it. So now it's just a normal practice run for her. Gap board slide coming into the first transition feature. There's that backside 360. Coming in the next one. And the front side. See, you notice that she went off the smaller part of the wall compared to like Jamie, who was hitting, you know, the full 22 foot cut. But she goes up on that big rail right before this final jump for the Ooh. cab 900. I like that. So much improved from that first run. You know, really just started off right from the first rail. She had trouble in her first run on the first rail. As soon as that clicked, it was like, okay, I got that out of my head from run number one, and now I can just do what I do. 
that's going to put her in a nice confidence for her last run. And this is tricky. The way she has to pop to get that 270 out, that's where she fell on the first run. She gets it that time. And then the front side, 720. But rounds it out big with this switch front side, 900, <coughs> tail grab. And that tail grab was yanked. I liked it. You haven't seen anyone do the cab nine with the nose grab there. Right. Um, but just the fact that she was able to collect herself, she had trouble on the first rail, and get, get through that, and then it was like, okay, I'm good to go. It really does. It's once you get through that first, first feature, then you're like, all right, I'm on it now. Well, that puts her just outside the podium, and no doubt gives her some strong confidence heading into the third and final run. Again, on a picture-perfect day here at Vail. Yeah, how's Happiness he? up at the top. Vibes on vibes on vibes in the rider's tent. That's a big time for it. Thank you. As it goes to the, the pride of San Clemente, California. Oh, yeah. Haley Langland. Haley's due. She is due. Qualified third. Um, has been that name for the last couple of years that you say she can win this thing. I love that backside lip slide. Whipping it around. It's one thing, she has such good board control. There's the front side by 40. She's going a little deep, a little in the back seat. But I love it because the way that she does it, it looks like a cork front seven and a half pipe. And she says she, you know, she grew up riding half pipe, and you can see the way that she attacks the transition features. Oh, cab 1080. So she'll throw this run away, go back up, and and I want to look at that transition feature because it's the way she's spinning off of it. Um, it's really difficult because it's. We'll watch it here. So this backside lip slide, I mean, again, just so much style. Only a 5.5 on that. But see how she's carving up on her toes, but then she sort of has to, she's opening up her chest, and it's just, you, you really are going one direction and then the next direction quickly. And this little slam right Whew. here, just missing that head impact. You saw her reach back there. That's Those are the kind of slams that even though uh, it, it wasn't as bad. She's still going to feel it going back up. Oh, yeah. I mean, it is, it's still, it's warm as far as our standards for, for being on the mountain, but it's still cold and it's still really firm. That is brick. That landing right there, super hard, but Haley Langland, tough as can be, uh, and she will try to put it all together for this final run. Anagasa. First run just came out and said, I'm not holding back. Double crippler. And she said, it's not the result, it's the progression that matters to her. But if you focus on the progression and the actual work, then the results come. Had a little bobble in between the rails, but able to get it together for the gap board slide. And there's that double crippler going large. Coming in hot. She talked about it. Uh, I, had, I got a chance to spend some time with her yesterday, and she said just finding the sweet spot to, for the takeoff to actually do uh, the double crippler, that took her a week. But she started off just spinning frontside threes so she could find how to put her edge in properly to even try it before she started doing singles and then doubles. You know. I just love how she rides that first transition feature. Like her line off of it is flawless. And that's why you see her sending it. I mean, she could hit it way up on, up on the vert and be fine because she's traveling so much. And we can see after this rail right here, here's the gap front board. And then coming into this first transition feature. All right, Telestrate us, If buddy. we want to pause it right there. Telestrate us. See how that line, and she's getting right off the vert. I mean, if that was a half pipe ball, perfect. A lot of riders you see might take off there 
and they don't get the pop and the amplitude that she gets, but it's just so amazing because she's attacking it just like a half pipe wall. Louis Vito killing the Talus Trader, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Been waiting to use that. And like a veteran. And Anna giving me, you know, a picture perfect way to take off of a transition feature. This is going to make the, this third run <laughs> even more interesting because you know she was looking to get up into those high 80s and put a little bit more pressure. I'm sure the rest of the field feeling pressure, but a little bit of a sigh of relief of being like, okay, it's on now. You know, I was excited to see because you know she's going to change up that bottom jump. Mm. And she's got a bag of tricks on a big jump. We go back to the top to our number one qualifier, defending champ, who is presently in sixth place. Zoe Sadowski Sanat. So she fell on the front side 1080 on the bottom feature. That's what she needs to land here. I love her rail line up top. Board slide 270 out. Or switch board slide 270 out. 50-50 front side three and sending it off the kink. Coming in backside 540. Now switch. We talk about how difficult these transition features are and she's hitting it switch. So hits this 50-50 to backflip, and here's where she did the 1080. Coming into it. Ooh, oh, so she deep. was close. Oof. It's a testament to, to the viewers how big that jump is because she flipped that so slow and smooth and got it around fine, but that jump is large. And she starts off her run switch with the switch slide to pretzel out. Yeah, that 270 just before the kink. We were saying yesterday that the, the, the judge is really appreciating that switch backside is the hardest mm -hmm. that you can spin off of that feature. But look how deep she went here. That's, that's another hard slam. Look how off access she is. So that's the difference that she's, you know, separating herself also. So she, on that on the first one, she almost under flipped just a little bit. That one, she kind of over flipped it a little bit for how large she went. So hopefully run three, it'll be right, right in, the, in middle. the middle. <laughs> Saw Zoe Sadowski Sanat giving a little, little, little cl clutch to the, uh, that right arm there. Hopefully that slam did, won't affect her too much in this final run. Somehow or another, we find ourselves looking at the last six runs that will determine the 2020 Burton U.S. Open snowboarding champion in slope style. Our expectations, you know, were high, but sometimes, you know, the expectations relative to what it's like to be in competition, it, it doesn't match. Sometimes it takes a little longer uh, for the riders to find that rhythm, but in this event, just first run, game time. You know what's great too is, you know, Jamie said, oh, I was really nervous. It was the first full pull. And she doesn't look nervous riding. She has that confidence and she can just go out there and go for the double 10. Well, yeah, and Julia Marino has even said that Jamie's a very calm presence up there, that she kind of keeps everyone level and, and is good and supportive for the riders at the top. Mm -hmm. See Jamie Anderson going through some uh, last minute preparation for this final run we are heading to the third runs louis we're going to send you up to the top with a microphone thank you stay with us we're crowning the champion here on finals friday who is it going to be in 2020 dive into the world of red bull tv your daily source for action sports, music, and entertainment. Download the Red Bull TV app for free and sign in to watch all of our content offline. Get the Red Bull TV app now. Four women. Mathilde Grimaud, Kelly Sildaru. 
Tess Ledoux, Jenny Lee Bermanson. Shake up the world of free skiing. This girl is beyond talented. X Games, World Championships, you name it, they rock it. A thin line between friendship and competition. Four, now available on Red Bull TV. From underground activity to Olympic sport. It's hard to explain, you, know, you don't get it from anything else. Maximum adrenaline filled with maximum like happiness and relief. Jump into the world of snowboarding. Terminology, tricks, and how it all began. See spectacular runs and meet the big names in history. The ABC of Snowboarding, now available on Red Bull TV. Welcome back to a magical finals Friday. We're in the women's slope finals at the Burton US Open Snowboarding Championships. Sal Masekela joined by X Games gold medalist Tina Dixon. And we are getting everything that we hoped we would get from this level of women's snowboarding in 2020. Slope style course just looking ready. It's saying, give me some more. Tina, uh, your expectations. You want to make? Do you want to make a call as to who's going to win? Yeah. Oh, I'm not going to say that, but I am going to say this. Um, I've been to enough events to where if you've landed the first run, you have problems on that second run. There's something about the third run, the pressure, this heavy of a field, and the support that um, each rider gives each other. I think we're going to see some big major landed runs. Yeah, potentials for some never been done. We saw some, 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 some real glimpses, especially with those double corks on that last hit. I had a chance uh, to spend some time yesterday with Anna Gasser for a little fireside chat. Ever since she did uh, the triple cork, never done before by a woman, uh, the, the trick really heard around the world, it's kind of caused her to have an interesting relationship with it, almost like a blessing and a curse. Here's more. I wanted to um, to talk to you about your relationship with this trick, the triple. Ooh, I was really happy I could land the first triple, but I didn't know that it meant that everyone would ask me, when are you gonna do the first triple in a contest? Mm. And of course, like, when, when a lot of people ask about something, you, you start to think yourself, you're like, actually, it would be nice if I could be the first to do this triple in a comp but also it puts a little pressure on it. So this year going into to X Games, I was really excited. I was like, okay, this is gonna be the year I can do, I get the chance to try the triple. But conditions were, were not on my side. I was a little, I was running slow, but my mindset was the triple is gonna happen anyway. Watching the way you went to war with it, <laughs> when you switch into that gear, you, it seems like you go to a different place. And with this triple, it was like you were in another, another atmosphere. Yeah, there was no way I wouldn't try this trick. I really was in the mindset for the triple. I like, and I didn't want to give up. The battle was pretty close too, cause I almost landed my first one. Mm. Then I had a big crash on my second one, but nothing was hurting. And then I almost landed my third one. And I was like, what's going on? And then the big crash that kind of game over the triple one that time, yeah. but I'll be back. <laughs> so it's, 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 it's one to one between you and the triple. It's even. No. It's even, yeah. But I learned too. I learned that I shouldn't force to do a new trick. So now the next time I'm gonna go to war, I'm gonna be better prepared. And I, I'm gonna like choose a jump that I have speed on and that I actually feel the trick on and not be too stubborn to try it no matter what. I really, really, really enjoyed that conversation with Anna. And, you know, you, you, you talk to her and she's kind of quiet and sub subdued, but you, as far as an athlete is concerned, like, she's on another level. She's, she's a different person when you get her on the slopes and you put um, terrain in front of her that she starts thinking of new ideas and potential tricks to yeah. do. Really nice to get that glimpse uh, into what that is like. We don't know if we'll see it today. She, she's told us 
flat out. She's got to feel it. Uh, there we see our defending champ, Zoe sadowski Sanat. as we do the re-rack. She was in last place. She will now go first. Jamie Anderson will have the benefit in that first place uh, from these, after these first two runs of going last. How does the re-rack affect you, you think, um, at this point when the champs, championship's on the line? Well, so we just saw Zoe go, and she took that hard crash. Right. She's back in the gate. Right. She did not have a lot of time to recover. So it can work two ways. It can work to the benefit because she's warmed up. She just rode the course. She knows exactly what the speeds are doing. She knows exactly how, you know, she needs to attack it. But then again, she just rode the course. She's yeah. tired. But in practice, when they're in that kind of mindset, they're kind of going up and you trying go, to get You go, it's nonstop anyway. And I've seen this before at the US Open where Mark McMorris in a re-rack went back up right after taking a run and go. he nailed it. Right, and won that year. So there you go. All right, well, we're gonna see how this plays out for the 18-year-old from Wanaka, New Zealand, our defending champ in her final run, Zoe sadowski Sinat. Drops in, switch, pretzel out. 50-50 to front side, 360 out. Ooh, tiny bit of a wheelie on that. Okay, so she has the backside 540 now heading into this transition feature switch. Switch, backside 540, showing both directions. 50-50 backflip out. Watch out for the foul though. And she goes for it again. You just can't put it down. Three attempts on that front side 1080. I got to give her props for going for it every time. It just does not cease to amaze me that like a front double cork 1080 is what it takes to win. <laughs> uh, well, at slope style in 2020. You know, I think the result is important to her, but I think at this stage it's landing the trick. She wants to get that trick landed. Went to town on that front half of the course. That bobble might have cost her a couple of points. So we see the landing. She's just a little bit toe heavy, leaning a little bit too much far forward. But that off access in the air, yeah, you're spinning in two different directions mm -hmm. and then trying to land flat based. It's like you're doing a flat rotation, but also a flip at the same time. Well, again, only 18 already with uh, a U.S. Open championship under her belt. This is just the beginning of a long career for Zoe Sadowski Sanat, who will no doubt sit back now and cheer on the rest of the field. You know, we talked earlier about um, what it takes to be an athlete at this level and that mindset. Mm. Zoe's got it, Anna's got it. Every single one of these women in this finals has it. And at 19 years old, Haley, L Haley Langland has it like she's been here for decades. Has, we've seen the glimpses of everything that she needs. Can she put together that full pull? She makes the run that she wants. She's easily in conversation uh, to be at the top of the podium. Haley Langland starts out with a beautiful backside lip slide. And then a 270 out. Coming into this feature and has problems on that again. Going for that front side 540. And it's so hard on those transition features to get those shoulders around and get your body centered to land switch on that feature. Well, on a straight jump, you, you're not having to load the shoulders in the way that you do on that transition jump. And a lot of the riders were talking about, yeah, Haley, sending a big old beautiful method for the crowd at the end. A lot of the riders were talking about you have to learn, learning how to do that in a run as opposed to on a half pipe. Mm -hmm. No matter how comfortable you are, it's still new for these riders in a slope style course. Yeah, you kind of have to hit it and already picture where you're going to land. 
So it's a front side rotation that she's doing on that transition. That's hard in and of itself. And then goes for that 540. But check this out. That's just snowboarding at its finest. Yeah, that's that's textbook right there. Like you can do all the tricks on it, but if you, don't have a, if you don't have a beautiful method like this, I mean, that's just, that's as, that's as gorgeous to me as any double cork on earth. Oh, yeah. Haley Langland, look, look for at a, at a wave near you this summer if you're in Southern California. You might be like, is that Haley Langland? Yeah. And she rips. She'll be uh, on her electric bike going down to trestles, and I'll be on the old school bike. <laughs> That's kind of what happens. All right, four more riders. Annie Rukiyavi from Kusumo, Finland. What an incredible career uh, Annie has had, 29 years of age. So board slide back. 270 out. Big gap to lip slide. Judges gonna like that one. Oh, big backside 720. She's coming out of that with a lot of speed. And then a front side 720. Yeah, and he's got two Olympic medals. Hitting that high bar. And now approaching this bottom jump switch. Going for that the cab 900 again. Had the speed too. Just a little bit more on the rotation it looked like. But such a great performance. You know, when you're spinning those rotations too, you want to be stylish in the air and get that grab because it is so critical. And it's that balance, right, of spinning enough And this was big. This backside 720 scores a 7.3 on that. And this cab 900, just this last 180 was a little bit short. And you know what you got to love about any, you saw that commitment to the grab, mm -hmm. which slows down the rotation. Mm -hmm. If she had a little bit more pop, perhaps she makes it around, but she wasn't going to compromise doing, executing the trick the best she could, as opposed to swimming, spinning it to land it. Yep. It's that balance of slowing it down, but you know, being fast enough to get it around. Great riding, helping to push this field. As you see, Jamie Anderson watching intently. She will be going final as our current leader. As we've highlighted, seven wins. What it would mean to get eight. Oh. In this, I believe she's uh, her 13th appearance. But Miyabi Onitsuka, the 21 year old from Japan, she would love to be in that conversation. Oh, and you know, after X Games, she actually stayed in Colorado to work on her rail game. You see her right there with that 270 out and how she just landed that. And then a big rotation there. Sending it to the moon with that 720. And then a front side 720. Oh, and then check that out with the switch backside 360. So she's heading into this bottom jump switch with the cab 1080. And she goes down on that. Fucking get that her. That, that ta takeoff is so crazy. Like, she comes literally right off the corner of the jump, drifting to the left. Um, gotta love the fact that she's just like, I'm, I'm throwing this thing. Yeah, and she has so many big air tricks that she could do on that. Yeah, she's deciding to go for that uh, cab 1080. But do you see, she her rail game has gotten so much better. I, I love that insight into her commitment, staying, staying in Aspen to work specifically on the rail game, getting that 8.7 up at the top. And she just over rotated a tiny bit on that. Again, Miyabi Onitsuka, been a prodigy since six years of age in snowboarding. That's when she started competing. And at 21, 
Already a long career that's just getting started. It really on, is yeah. just getting started for and her. Presently in that same place she was last year uh, with a possible third place finish. But next up, <laughs> Anna Gasser. Did she give you any indication that she would do the triple today? She did not give me any indication that she would. And trust me, I, uh, I'm a professional interviewer, <laughs> Tina. Uh, I, I pushed for it as, as much as I could, but she gave no indication. And, and I, I really think, here's what she did give me in that conversation. She really, really has learned not to think about what the judges expect from her and everyone else saying, like, is she going to throw the triple? She said that really got into her head, and she wasn't doing it for the right reasons, was doing it because of other people's expectations. However, if she sees it, if she has the feeling that she can do it, then she'll know when she gets there. It has to come from within. 100%. There you see Jamie Anderson looking intently because she knows Anna Gasser is more than capable of stepping up to the plate and taking that top spot. Coming into this double crippler. And she goes big on that. Hold on to the landing. That was close. Almost catching that heel side edge. Big front side 540 now coming in switch. So she's taking a new approach here. That switch board slide 270 out. So she's going into this switch. The cab double oh. 900. Oh my God, she landed so deep. Is she going to do cap 10? No. Oh, my gosh. I thought it gets you good. And when we say deep, that's that part of the transition deep in the landing uh, where the riders just don't want to be. A heavy impact there. You see medical running up uh, to attend to Anna to make sure that she is okay. Tough as can be. We saw the, we saw the, the, the replays from that crash uh, at X Games that you just like, wait, how did she even come back? from that, um, but this is what this is what they train for. You know, snowboarding, you need to, you have to learn how to crash just as, as much as you learn how to make some. She went absolutely massive on that. That was a scary one. Happy to see her being able to hug everyone and that she is okay. <laughs> Well, Jamie Anderson is happy for two reasons. The first one being that Anagasa is okay. The last thing that she would want to do is take a victory lap uh, knowing that she was hurt. But with that knowledge, an unprecedented eighth win for the most dominant woman and really one of the most dominant competitors, male or female, in the history of snowboarding. Jamie Anderson about to take a victory lap at this 2020 Burton US Open Snowboarding Championship, celebrating the spirit and the culture of snowboarding given to us by Jake Burton. This has got to be a special moment. Yeah, well, and it's also, it's women like Anna Gasser, Zoe, Haley Langland that have kept pushing Jamie. And so, and Jamie realizes that. She's like, without them, I don't know if I would have been able to progress at the same, you know, consistency. You heard her in her interview. She said, these women and their riding levels making my heart burst open mm -hmm. and makes me happy to be here at 29 and still pushing it as uh, she's not taking it easy no. <laughs> on this victory lap. She's been having a phenomenal year. You know, every contest that I've seen her ride at, it's her style, and then she's adding the new difficulty. Uh, but Jamie just continues to excel at the sport of snowboarding at her eighth U.S. Open win. Oh, <laughs> and she's even going for it there when she knew she won. She did not have to go for that. Did not. But Jamie Anderson wouldn't have it any other way. As we see the entire field congratulating Jamie, Louis Anderson, Louis Anderson, Louis Vito. Congratulations, Jamie, your eighth U.S. Open championship. 
How does it feel? Holy, it feels really good. I was, uh, I'm so freaking happy. Really wanted to get that Cub 10, but I'm just, I can't believe my first run held. Does winning eight of them, does the feeling ever change? <laughs> this one feels like the best one yet, for sure. And then one last question. You've been so dominant for so long. What do you think's been the key for you to stay at the top for as long as you have? I think I have to switch it up. I gotta go ride POW, I gotta do other things. Not be so focused on just snowboarding, but on an overall well-balanced life. Well, and, be, and being grateful. I think gratitude goes a long way. And I love snowboarding and I love this event. Big shout out to Jake and definitely dedicated this event to him and everything he's brought to this beautiful industry that we all get to enjoy now. Well, I know I had to battle so many people just to get the interview with you. So your eighth championship. Congratulations, Jamie. Now go enjoy. Thank you. Congratulations, Holy Jamie, and thank you, Louis Vito. Somewhere Louis yeah, Anderson is out there going, thanks for the plug, Sam Asakella. But wow, um, love, love, love hearing her put in the context the, the totality of all of these influences, right? The backcountry, et cetera, and of course that joy uh, in doing this in this special year celebrating Jake Burton's life. Uh, but let's take a look back at how Jamie did it in this first run. Because the first run, Cena, you know, really like is where it was at. Oh, yeah! Everyone came out firing, including Jamie Anderson. Starts out with a backside lip slide, and then board slide to 270 out there. Backside 540, and watch her landings. She's just landing with authority on everyone, and then the switch backside 540. Her smooth style her consistency, and a big rotation setting herself up for this bottom feature where she does the cab double cork 900. And what was nice to see her, nice to see about that landing that, is that was the trick that kept her out of the finals in 2019. In speed, power, flow. Those are the criteria uh, for the WSL and surfing, that was the criteria for Jamie Anderson here uh, in slope style. Uh, in a field where it could have been any one of these women's day, today it was Jamie Anderson. Congratulations to Anagasa Miyabi Onitsuka again uh, in that third place position, but really congrats to the entire field as uh, they're on standby there to give away some hardware and some funds uh, as, as well. The men are, are going to they, they've, they've been served. They've been put on notice by the women's field. <laughs> you know, and what was really nice is Jamie said, this is the best one yet. Yeah. She's like, I'm almost 30, and this is the best U.S. Open win yet for her. Yeah, it says something. It really does, and I love the way that she's said that, she, you know, I'm, I'm pushed by these girls. I'm looking to them. She doesn't have that attitude like, well, I'm actually the one. Mm -hmm. She's like, no, I'm looking at what they're doing, and that helps to put me at this, uh, this place. Um, you that are watching at home, the Cliff Best line. Um, get your submissions in, that, that, that Cliff Bar Best line. Uh, let us know who you're thinking um, because somebody wants to win that. Oh, those are so fun to watch too. If you saw uh, Rene, Rene Kangas' uh, line from last year, he just made it look so fun. He was going through the park at the top right. and was carving up on the side hits. And I saw actually uh, Rene posted a line through the park today that was insane. Gimbal God had followed. He's definitely uh, got a possibility yeah, he for the wants, win. Yeah, he wants that other win. Get social. Hit us up on, on Instagram, etc., and let us know who you are thinking. Uh, and, of course, uh, you see the hashtags there at the bottom. Burton US Open. Hit us up at Red Bull Snow, at Burton Snowboards. Uh, let us know where you're watching. Show us how you're watching uh, from around the world here at the Burton US Open. Um, we're still, you know, just trying to comprehend what we just watched. How about we take a look at that second run uh, for Anna Gasser that got her the second place finish. The, what a great battle with her and Jamie. Oh, yeah, and they continue to push each other as well. And Anna Gasser came into this final with a brand new trick, that double crippler that she learned in practice. 
she envisioned it in her mind and then she put it to work in her competition run and that's just how Anna Gasser does it. Front side 540. Switchboard slide and then hits this bottom jump with the cab double cork 900 stomps it and rides away perfect. So this was the very last jump on her third run and she went huge. I'm wondering if the snow, you know, when the sun comes, sometimes the snow speeds up and I'm wondering if that was the case with that trick. Yeah, we did see the rider speed checking considerably into that last jump. She still almost landed in the parking lot. So glad that Anagasa is okay. Um, what incredible performance uh, from, all, from her and the entire field. Hey. You're watching Red Bull TV for a reason, because you know, we put on the best. The best in the world joined the defying celebration of mountain biking. Come back to Rotorua, the Crankworks World Tour 2020 from New Zealand, March 5th through 8th. You can watch that live uh, on Red Bull TV. Rotorua, New Zealand, a beautiful place. Have you been ever been to? A, you've been to a crankworks, I've been to, right? I've been to yeah, Rotorua. Been a, yeah, been to a phenomenal race. mountain biking there. Yeah, Absolutely. oh, it's a great place. We're not done today on finals day, men's slope style. And what's nice about this too is uh, the weather. You know, when they qualified in semifinals a few days ago, uh, I talked to Stalle afterwards, and he's like, I could not see a thing. Yeah, um, completely flat light up there. Yet today, if you look at these conditions, blue skies. Uh, this is the kind of weather you want to have a contest in. Yeah, in that qualifiers, the women had sunshine in the morning and the men kind of had the whole back. It was just sur a survival uh, semifinal, but that will not be the case today as it is nothing but blue sky perfection here in Vail. We'll be back shortly with men's slope style finals, but for now, here's a highlight at the history made yet again today uh, in the women's final here at the Burton US Open Snowboarding Championships. Perfect.